In this video, we're going to talk about retaining rings. Uh, retaining rings are used on shafts or in circular holes to retain various pieces of hardware or components. On this McMaster page, we see a variety of different types of retaining rings. Uh, the most common uh, type that uh, that we're familiar with, anyway, is the um, uh, this this standard uh configuration here and also um the the e-clip which is this guy right here um, one thing to note about the the e-clip style is these can only be placed um, on the outside of a shaft whereas the uh, the other style the standard style if i go back this uh, standard style can be placed either on the inside or on the outside it can be uh, placed uh, on the outside of a shaft or on the inside of a hole and uh, you can see this, the external retaining rings right here have uh, little ears that stick up uh, that are not flush with the external diameter of that retaining ring, whereas the internal rings are uh, kind of flush all the way around the, the outside diameter so that they can sit nicely uh, inside of a, an internal groove within a hole. And we'll look at some examples of how of how that works. Uh, another thing to note is that the this standard style, you'll see these two holes in here, and all of the different whether it's an internal or external ring, all have those holes. Those holes are used with a special tool to engage the retaining ring and install it or remove it. Uh, and whereas the 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 e clip style, this one here. Uh, this one technically does not require a tool, although you, you usually still have to use like a flathead screwdriver or something like that to push these onto uh, onto the shaft. So here's a good example of how the the E clip style works, um, and you can push it onto your shaft with anything you want, but um, a flathead screwdriver usually works pretty well. Um, <clears throat> these uh, these retaining rings require specific geometry to fit correctly and once you pick out the retaining ring that you want uh, McMaster tells you what uh, what the retaining ring geometry should be or the, the groove that is so right here you know if we pick out this particular retaining ring it gives us a print it says this is our shaft right here and this is the groove in the shaft that you need to create in order for this retaining ring to fit correctly so it gives you you know an 029 width with a, uh, a plus three minus nothing tolerance on that width and then it gives us a groove diameter 0.21 inches plus three minus nothing um, uh, also side note when when someone says plus three minus nothing typically what they're saying is plus three thousandths of an inch minus nothing a lot of times uh, people will will just exclude the thousandth for convenience Okay, so that's the uh, the external or the the, uh, the side mount e clip style retainer retaining ring, and let's go back real quick now and look at this uh, standard style again. Uh, again, same thing with the standard style. Uh, you pick out the one that you want, and McMaster will provide dimensions for you. Same kind of schematic here: groove width, groove diameter, tolerance is associated with both. And now let's t take a quick look at the tool that's used to uh, install these types of uh, uh, retaining rings, whether it's an internal or external, uh, but the, these standard type uh, retaining rings. Let's see. So this is what the tool looks like. And you can see these two little teeth or prongs at the tip, and those engage with the little holes in the retaining rings and uh, uh, kind of squeeze those holes together. So if you go back and look at this hole, this is shown with those holes already kind of together, but um, okay, here's a good view for what the retaining ring looks like before you have squeezed those holes together um, if uh, or, or separated them apart. That's right, this is actually an external retaining ring, so they would start close together like that, and then you would be uh, expanding them apart in order to install it onto your shaft. Uh, whereas the, let's see, the internal ring style would start... Um, would start with those those holes separated and uh, and then you'd squeeze them together and compress them in order to fit it into a hole. Here's a good um, illustration here of, of uh, kind of what that interface looks like. <clears throat> um, these tools uh, are often, not always, but often 
uh, interchangeable so that you can, uh, there's a little, uh, I don't know, a switch or something on these tools that you turn one way and they're configured to expand the um, uh, external style retaining ring and then you turn that switch the other way and now it's reconfigured to compress the internal style uh, retaining ring. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at a real world example how this is used in an actual design. Here's an assembly we've looked at before for other elements and this time we're going to look at this for the how the retaining rings were integrated. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and uh, these, these two shafts these run inside some linear ball bearings and right here you can see the faces of those linear ball bearings and we wanted to make sure that the linear ball bearings did not fall out of this this green piece here so if I make this part uh, transparent there you can see the linear ball bearings we have in there one two three four and <clears throat> Uh, you can kind of see this edge right here. That edge is a through hole inside the block and it's kind of hard to tell if you don't know what you're looking for but there is a, a step or a ledge right here. So there's a, a hole right here and then that hole steps out and continues to accommodate the the uh, linear ball bearings. So the, the linear ball bearings are prevented from moving axially further inwards but uh, and, and it's a very close fit we have between the, the bore ID right here and the OD of the, the ball bearing housing itself. So there's not a lot of play in there, but it's not quite a press fit either. We wanted to be able to get these out if we had to. So uh, in order to prevent these linear ball bearings from exiting unintentionally, this block, uh, you know, in this direction, we put some O-rings, we put some retaining rings in there. And you can see we've got one, two, and then same thing, three, four on the other side. And those retaining rings uh, allow us to retain these linear ball bearings. Now linear ball bearings are not the only things that you can retain, but uh, bearings are a common piece of hardware that are retained using uh, retaining rings. Um, that being said, retaining rings can be used to retain whatever you want. They're just a real general purpose piece of hardware. Uh, if I hide this retaining ring here, you can see there's the groove right there. That internal groove was created um, and then the, the retaining ring was, uh, was installed in there. So that is an example of uh, a real world situation in which retaining rings were used. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.